that's where that's where all the burning is, right? I mean, at, at the end of the day, those hot spots got down to those tanks, right. and those tanks are what popped. And and uh, just what I'm going to do for you here is kind of uh, we can put this into the uh, monitor that you're looking at. Just give me one second here sure. and sort of kind of explain further as we're looking at the live view of Sky Eye, sort of what you were just talking about um, in, in in terms of how this whole area is oriented. Correct. So right now you're looking at where uh, like the stationed area, but you can see the piping off over there towards the backside of those trucks. They're stationed off to the, I, I would assume that's either the east or south. Um, so they'll, they, can, they can station there. But as sky widens out, you'll see where those tanks are in the fire and that building on the other side, those are the tracks right here. This is where the, it comes off of the tracks to this building which is not there on the Google Maps, and that building is where they fill up the tanks, these rail cars, to go wherever their destination is. Yeah. So you can see that track was already built to this building. The building has been put since been put in place. And then this right here is obviously the piping that leads to those big tanks that are down the, down the way there. Um, but those things, obviously, whatever chemical is in there, whatever is firing up, is blowing and going right there yeah right we'll continue to stay on top of it again that's uh, justin sternberg here in the newsroom giving us an idea of just kind of how this whole thing is laid out and where uh, the fire is coming from with all of this uh, different traffic as well and uh, as don sort of uh, pulls out i'm gonna check back in with with don armstrong here don did we get our first sign kind of a fire trucks and a fire response here Yes, they have all arrived on the scene, at least for now, and uh, they are, again, stationed well away from that fire. This is the closest group of them here. They've got a command center set, set up. Uh, this is uh, the SEMA. This is the mutual aid uh, group that I was talking about, Channel uh, Industries Mutual Aid, and uh, these are all of the firefighters that have been trained in their particular area of expertise from all of the different chemical companies around here. So that's why you may not be familiar with SEMA, but uh, they all gather up and they all fight these chemical fires. They're well trained in this. And uh, this is what we are hoping the best is gonna come out. No one is injured in this fire or explosion. You know, many of these things are done remotely because they can be dangerous like this. And so we don't know if anybody was on duty here while they were doing this, uh, this transfer of product from the tanks that blew up into the rail car. There's one sitting underneath, two of them actually, underneath this building right here. These are loading facilities over here in this area of the ship channel and the chemical plants off of 225 and the Beltway. Jonathan? Don, thanks so much. I want to call y'all's attention. We did now just get an update from the city of Pasadena uh, that we're looking at on their Twitter page, as you can see, and I'm going to uh, lower Don's audio while we do this. The city of Pasadena monitoring a, f a plant fire at INEOC, uh, INEA. Currently, there are no protective actions needed by residents. So according to uh, the city of Pasadena here, residents seem to be okay, as Don said, not really a residential area, but sort of a highly populated uh, area in terms of industrial things and plants and uh, factories and what have you. So that our first update there from the city of Pasadena uh, in terms of what's going on and we have finally right established the uh, plant and the exact location and a kind of structure that we're dealing with. want to uh, call y'all's attention to the uh, 
a video that we've got from a little bit earlier. This is sort of uh, one of the views from the ground. This is from our Transtar camera. This earlier, I'm going to back this up here. Take a look. Obviously, you're seeing some smoke and some fire. And then watch as this thing really erupts. This is video, my goodness, of the explosion. Obviously, an explosion and what was already on fire. Uh, already on fire there. Uh, really just kind of exploded into a, a different level and then all of a sudden you see a lot more fire and smoke coming. We're just kind of looking at this on loop right now. I mean, it looks like a volcano explosion uh, in a lot of ways. So that is the video uh, that we were able to get in from Transtar just now. And I want to map this out for you exactly where this is. I'm going to lower Don's audio while we uh, have other things on camera. The plant explosion reported, right? Uh, back that up one more time. This is uh, where you're looking at, obviously, east of Houston, southeast of Houston there, right next to 228. Uh, and the Beltway is the area that we're looking at. And we will go back uh, live now to the uh, feed from Sky Eye, where we uh, it looked like uh, Don Armstrong saw actual train cars on fire. Is that what we were just looking at? No, that's actually an 18-wheeler tanker. And right at the head of this, right there in the center of your screen, what's still burning is the actual tractor of the tractor trailer rig. Wondering if this may have had something to play into all of this and the fire and explosion. Just don't know. Let's pray that uh, there was no driver in that truck at the time of the explosion because it was a very violent explosion. Very violent I have not explosion. seen your video. I yeah, I can't see that. Yeah, uh, I can't see that. Uh, uh, now I'm hearing myself uh, back, so we're going to have to get our audio. Uh, there you go. Thank you very much. Very confusing when you hear yourself back in a delay. But uh, at any rate, uh, as you can see, that tractor trailer rear is really backed up into that area where those tanks that exploded are. Don't know anything other than that. I'm just telling you what I see right now. There's one of the tanks over here. When we got here and arrived on the scene, you see the whole bottom of the tank is gone. When we arrived on the scene, that was still smoldering. And all of this area out here smoldering as well. There is another tank that is located. Can't find it just now, but there it is right there. There are other tanks and pieces of equipment around here. So we're not sure if that is what caused the, the fire and the explosion. But uh, clearly, it is a major incident over here in the Pasadena area in the chemical complex along 225 and the Beltway. We were looking for mutual aid. We found it not too far from the actual uh, fire itself. They have stationed themselves here uh, not too far from the fire. A lot of them, a lot of them from other chemical companies here. That's what they do to fight these fires over here. Uh, and as you can tell, uh, all of them waiting for word to get in. We found just a few moments ago another fire truck down here that was hooking up to uh, uh, the water. But, you know, they've got to get that fire cut off. And whatever is feeding it, that's going to be their first, uh, their first actual venture into battling the flames here. Jonathan? Don, thanks so much. I want to bring in now, as we've got team coverage from a lot of different ways, um, assignment editor Doug Schertz. And Doug, can you just confirm uh, what we know about where this is and what plant this is specifically? Yes, we uh, spoke to Pasadena police, just making sure my microphone was uh, on correctly. Uh, we, we spoke to Pasadena police who told us that, that their understanding is that this is the Enos uh, plant facility. This is on Highway 225 inbound, just inside the Beltway. Uh, there was a message on the care line from one of the neighboring businesses, neighboring chemical companies there, saying that, uh, talking about that an incident occurred near that facility and that there, obviously there was a, a bunch of, uh, of medical and, and fire department personnel arriving at that scene, so encouraging folks to you know, clear out of the way and make sure that any arriving uh, emergency crews are, you know, have plenty of uh, availability to get into that location. And we saw that there was a number of fire agencies already on scene there. So this is uh, also impacting your traffic. And we just got this traffic information, the toll road authority tweeting out about drivers traveling northbound uh, along the Beltway. You're going to be detoured to Highway 225. If you're traveling southbound on the Beltway through there, you'll be detoured onto I-10. So the Ship Channel Bridge and Don's showing us the uh, the, the Ship Channel Bridge there for the Beltway, not the 610 loop, but the Beltway 
toll, toll bridge that is currently being shut down. If you're going north, if you're trying to go north on the Beltway, you're going to be diverted at 225 to take 225 to make it around to your destination. If you're coming south across the bridge, across the ship channel, you're going to be diverted there at I-10 and forced to go one of the two ways. Uh, also, at this time, the Lynchburg Ferry and the Washburn Tunnel services are still open and operating at this point. So the Lynchburg Ferry or the Washburn Tunnel is another option for you there. Again, we're trying to gather the latest information here. Uh, the command post is getting set up out there uh, as far as all the emergency responders and representatives for uh, all the agencies that are out there that will hopefully be getting updates from them quickly. But again, we started hearing this um, shortly around 12 25 if I remember correctly 12 12 15 12 20 somewhere in that realm is when we started hearing the information about shutting down freeways uh, there's a fire out here we started looking at the cameras and determined that there was something out there large and then we saw that explosion uh, on the Transtar camera uh, as this incident just grew and grew there and we started getting phone calls from folks in that area so our crews in route sky 13 giving us the pictures here we'll have to get some fuel and get back up to get over this and give you the latest it's ABC 13's Doug Schertz, our assignment editor, reporting there uh, from the newsroom. Uh, Doug, thanks so much for that. And I'm going to step away here. We're going to stay with this. Obviously, a lot to monitor. And uh, we're going to uh, welcome in ABC 13's Chauncey Glover here in just a second for a little bit more on this. But going to uh, just leave this up as we continue to watch this burn and track all of the different implications of this. Stay with us here. Uh, be back in about 15 seconds on ABC 13. Okay. Hey, so. could you ask him, ask him to confirm?
Okay, resetting some things, and we do have uh, some additional information right now in terms of uh, what we're looking at and also an injury update as well that we have learned uh, that one person has been hospitalized. I want to welcome in ABC 13's uh, Chauncey Glover here in the newsroom. Chauncey, I, I know we've been able to identify a little bit uh, what this plant is and kind of what might be burning out there. Yes, uh, first of all, that, that, that latest update, we did, we did see all those emergency crews out there, but we, did, we were able to confirm one person has been taken to the hospital. But uh, w when you think about that, uh, you, you, you automatically think about past plant fires sure. that we've covered and uh, what uh, workers may have been exposed to or what they were exposed to. So we know um, Enios, if that's the correct pronunciation, we're still um, getting confirmation on that. On their website, there are 36 businesses. They produce a huge variety of products uh, relating to and use of oil and gas, uh, chemicals and a lot of polymers. And on their website, it talks about the flow chart of the polymers that they use, the natural gas, the crude oil. Uh, we've heard about the, the ethane, the propane, and also we've heard about the propylene. We've heard benzene. We've heard that. Yeah. All of those things in former um, chemical fires that we've covered here. Um, and I'm looking for propylene on one and, of course, ethanol. Uh, but they have an entire flow, flow chart as to uh, the polymers and uh, the oil and gas chemicals at uh, the flow chart as what they, um, you know, they use at this uh, particular um, uh, facility there, which is right off of uh, Highway 225, the Enios plant facility. Uh, neighbors there, you heard Doug talking about neighbors there reporting the incident. And then we finally getting confirmation. Uh, one person here on scene had to be taken to the hospital. Uh, right now, when we talk about those chemicals and what may or may not be burning out there, uh, we know uh, in, in the past that um, the air quality is always a big issue, especially for neighbors who live close by the refinery. We'll bring in Alan to talk about that. Yeah, guys, yeah, monitoring the winds there, the, the smoke plumes we've been seeing in the video is not really going way, way up in the sky. It's kind right. of somewhat close to the ground, but dispersing in some of the stronger winds we have today. So I uh, want to show you a couple of graphics. We can punch up max one. I'll show you just where the winds are going. Uh, the wind speeds have been roughly gusting 30, 32 miles per hour from the south and southeast there at the time of the explosion. And you see the winds right now shows Pasadena at 28. Let me take you a little bit closer. I'm going to show you the location of the explosion again we're I'm looking right there near the beltway area where the icon is and the winds are blowing basically straight from south to north or south southeast to north uh, so any plume from that is going across the buffalo bayou and then over toward interstate 10 but again it's it's being dispersed a good bit by the wind speeds which are still gusting about 30 to 35 miles per hour at their highest point this afternoon and and the wind direction if you look at that for the rest of this afternoon from now until 3 30 really doesn't change so you know this smoke plume whatever smoke there is is going to avoid definitely avoid downtown houston and houston metro right. area right there it's kind of the east side of town blowing up uh, straight south to north across high, uh, interstate 10. that's the direction all the smoke is going for the rest of this afternoon so I, I you know air quality concerns in the houston area not really a concern but of course you see in the video there's a good bit of smoke emanating right from that site still yeah, you can certainly see that. Thanks for that uh, weather update there, Alan. There's always a lot to pay attention to uh, with this. And we want to, i tell you what, Chauncey, let's just go ahead and kind of reset things. We're going to check you. in with Don Armstrong up there with Sky I-13. Don, I know that y'all have to uh, go ahead and get back grounded again so you can refuel, but what have you been able to gather here in the last 15 minutes or so? Well, some good news, Jonathan. As a matter of fact, it appears as though that the source that was feeding the fire has been cut off because this is where all of the fire was coming from right here. If you looked at my pictures just a little while ago and while we were panning around and looking at the traffic situation, it appeared as though that the source of the fire has been cut off and the only thing that's left as we speak right now are the uh, little hot spots, if you will, around here. The one concerning thing to me is the fact that there is fire underneath this tanker truck there's nothing left of the actual tractor part of it but the tanker is there and as you can see there are flames underneath it i don't know if there's anything in that tanker but they have to use caution as they go in and they will be looking at that i'm sure uh, and we have firefighters standing by as a matter of fact i saw them just out here they've got uh, lines laid uh, they've brought in some very heavy duty uh, uh, cannons, water cannons uh, over here just to make sure that they've got the equipment to put out the fire or fires as you will because 
you can see that there is a lot of grass fires out here from these exploding tanks that are laid across this area of the actual explosion itself. So we're going to keep an eye on it, but I'm glad to say that right now the source of the flame has been cut off out here at this chemical plant over at 225 and the Beltway. Back to you. Don, and you know in, in past cases that uh, we've seen this where there's fires near tankers like that and we just don't know what's in it. Uh, it's always imminent and you know they have the crews on standby because we don't know. Uh, but in the past we have seen things reignite. Um, so do you feel like that fire uh, at that particular tank that's still kind of burning a little bit under it, um, do, do you feel that to be a big concern right now? Well, it doesn't seem to be a big concern with the firefighters and uh, those that are here. Okay. I know it's kind of silly, but you'll get used to it. And uh, not sure I'm going to, we just lost Don's feed for a second, but we can get it uh, right back. There we go. Hey, Don, I'm sorry you dipped yeah, out. I'm we heard nothing you said in the past 10 seconds. Okay, well, I was just going to say the mutual aid fire uh, departments that are uh, on scene here, they are in touch with this chemical factory, if you will, and they know, the chemical factory knows whether there is anything in that 18-wheeler or not, and if so, what's in it or what's left in it, and uh, so they have a good idea, uh, and they're transferring that information to the mutual aid fire uh, fighters that are out here, so they have a good idea of what may be in that tanker that I showed you here at the source of the fire. Got you. All right, Don, and also doing a little more digging, uh, I found fr from their website that this is a, um, a chemical uh, factory, a facility that um, they use uh, several products um, uh, and they also make several products. When you uh, look at that on their website, it talks about the vast array of applications and we're talking about uh, transport. Uh, they say structural components to protect and reduce weight when used on aircrafts and trains and cars, fuel tanks and bumpers and headlamp units. They also talk about how they provide, what they provide for construction, the insulation, the window frames, the piping, uh, packaging material. Uh, also, uh, when it comes to keeping food fresh and uh, keeping it from contamination and liquid containers. Um, then, when it comes to the medical industry, they also say uh, they provide chemicals uh, that are used in making pharmaceuticals like insulin and antiviral and antiviral drugs. So, sure. um, and even in energy, gas transport pipers, uh, as well as uh, biodiesel, wind turbine blades, and also lubricants for those turbines. So, uh, we're talking about a company that has an array of, um, of, of, of products, uh, an array of chemicals, if you will, to make an array of products. And we are uh, standing by right now. We have learned from Harris County Sheriff's Office that uh, one person has been uh, transported again to the hospital. They're calling it an unknown blast at a refinery in East Harris County. I believe we also have ABC 13's Micah Hatfield standing by uh, to join us right now. Micah, you're on scene. It looks like here in the last uh, five minutes or so, there's been a big change as Don was showing us from above uh, that the fire, at least for the most part, has been put out. It, well, that's what it appears from where we're standing right now. I heard Don say that the, uh, you know, he obviously has the best view, right? The overhead view. Uh, he said the fire had been put out and we noticed that big plume of black smoke that had been pouring out since we arrived out here about 30 minutes ago is gone. Now it was happening way off in the distance. We've been uh, moved pretty far back from uh, the actual scene. There is a lot of law enforcement out here and they've got quite a few roads blocked. Uh, heavy, heavy traffic. If you need to travel in this area, I would suggest that you don't. Uh, it appears that the Beltway is closed uh, in the area of the Laporte Freeway because of uh, what's going on here. Um, what I can tell you is right when we got here, we ended up on some sort of uh, private road that led right up to the plant, the entrance of the plant where this happened. Uh, we quickly got kicked off, but before we were kicked off, um, we did see dozens of employees sitting outside in the grass outside of the um, outside of the uh, plant and and I believe that that was the a plant where this was actually happening um, the the people who came up to us were wearing oxy shirts but there didn't really seem to be any sort of um, uh, urgency amongst those employees they were all just kind of right. uh, sitting around just kind of waiting to see what happened next 
Um, but we're going to be out here continuing to monitor. Hopefully we'll get some information from officials soon and we'll bring it to you then. That's ABC, Thir to you guys. ABC 13's Micah Hatfield reporting. Micah, thanks so much. I want to, uh, Chauncey, pull up one thing. I think one, one concern here right now is what Micah was just talking about, this total closure here yeah. of the Sam Houston Tollway Ship Channel Bridge. Yeah, and, uh, and you know, we, we haven't seen that in a, in a while, and that can cause some major problems. I wish uh, we had uh, um, someone who could talk to us more on, on that, in a, or Lisa Rebus was here. Uh, but drivers traveling there southbound, um, she, she talked about how they're going to be detoured now. I think she said to I-10, um, uh, to the southbound direct connectors, yeah, I-10. Uh, then those southbound connectors will be closed. So uh, you're talking about a, a mess, uh, you know, right there, especially if, if this goes into a few hours into rush hour. I'm going to welcome in uh, Doug Schertz right now. Doug, I, I think you can speak a little bit more to that. Doug's at our assignment desk in terms of the traffic closures uh, that Chauncey was just talking about. Yeah, so this is a major closure of the East Sam Houston Tollway as a result of this. Uh, so you're looking at the the East the East Sam Houston Tollway. If you're coming up from um, Preston uh, past or Fairmont Boulevard, Fairmont Parkway rather, and you're trying to go north on the Beltway up past 225, wanting to cross the bridge over the Ship Channel, that is closed off right now. You're being forced off if you're going northbound from, uh, like I say, from uh, Fairmont or Preston. If you're coming from that direction, you're being forced off on Highway 225. So 225, you're going to have to go either out towards the Fred Hartman Bridge and take that around to your destination or take 225 inbound. The Washburn Tunnel is open, so you can take the tunnel or the Lynchburg Ferry across. Now, for those of you coming from the I-10 side, north of the ship channel, trying to come southbound on the uh, on the west on the east, same Houston Tollway there. If you're trying to come that way, that too is closed. You're being forced off at I-10, and again, I-10, you can take that out and go into the Baytown area and come down Spur 330 and take that. Again, to the Lynchburg, or the Washburn Tunnel. There are alternates to get through that area, but right now you cannot take the East Beltway through the heart of the uh, ship channel area there due to this the road closure. Uh, the constables and Pasadena police and others are blocking those that roadway right there. So you're going to expect some heavy traffic coming up through that area. It's ABC 13 assignment editor Doug Schertz. They're reporting from the desk. Doug, thanks so much. And just a different look at the uh, Transtar cameras that we're looking at here. I'm not exactly sure really what, what this shot is. This is a drone shot that we're looking at of some of those, uh, obviously the closures of that bridge uh, just to the, I mean, from our point in terms of where we're looking at it, just sort of it looks like, I guess, east of uh, where all of this is burning. Yes, that that is the drone shot, and um, and go, going back to the scene and what Don Armstrong was talking about, the the good news here that it seems like um, the the major fire um, is out, and they're putting putting out hot spots. He talked about the grass fires, um, and you know, in in the past, in covering these and talking um, to uh, you know air quality experts, um, the, the color of the smoke uh, that we see always. Yeah. Uh, is 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 a, uh, is a concerning and determining factor uh, and it's good that we don't see a we di don't right now see a lot of um of uh, of dark uh he heavy smoke over over this place and it's uh, interesting just, what you talked about yeah. earlier i'm gonna actually play this yeah. in real time uh chauncey this was uh, sort of the the explosion that we look at i mean you see it was one color yeah. and then really just exploded into another color yeah. so all of that has kind of dissipated, yeah. but it's just what you were talking about. Not yeah. just a fire, but things on fire in there. Yeah, and in the past when we've talked about air quality um, experts, they you know, they said, you know, when, when explosions like this happen and we see the blast and it's these, these dark plumes of smoke and then as it goes into the air and as time goes on and we see it to clear up, that is a, is a good sign right, that the right. air quality hasn't been tainted. Of course, yeah. we have no official way of, 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 of saying if it is or not, or if there's anything wrong with the air quality out there. That will but, still be determined, right, right yeah, as you go yeah. along. And a, a, again, a couple of uh, the big things, I guess, that you need to know here uh, is for one, this is a very industrial area, and the plant specifically 
uh, is going to be the, I'm just going back on the uh, name of the Enios. plant, the Enios, Enios plant. plant. Yeah. One person has been hospitalized and we've got a total closure uh, right now of the Sam Houston Tollway Ship Channel Bridge. You're going to have to detour at 225 if you're going northbound. I'll put it on the screen for you again one more time. And then drivers going southbound, you're going to have to detour to I-10. Now, the southbound direct connectors, though, to I-10 uh, are also going to be closed. So I think right now, as you uh, get a live look at the drone shot, you know, your, your concern, I guess, shifts a little bit from uh, what specifically was happening at the plant to now, as Chauncey mentioned, the, uh, you know, any issues with the air quality after that, the closures, and obviously it's disrupting a lot of people day, a lot of people's day, both there and certainly around there as well. Yeah, so we're, uh, I was just talking to one of the producers there. We're digging in for some information, trying to see um, if you know anything like this has happened here at this plant. I was yeah. reading online some stuff that we're trying to get confirmed, um, uh, maybe from a possible um, uh, incident, a similar incident um, back in 2015, but we're trying to um, get, get that confirmed. But yes, the Enios plant there uh, at 3503 Pasadena Freeway um, and we're talking about a company uh, that makes uh, uh, that has a wide variety of um, of chemicals and makes a wide variety yeah. of, of 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 things and uh, and we don't know. That's what Don Armstrong was talking about. That's the, the concern and scary part. Whenever you see those fires uh, near the tankers and near um, you know some of the big Trains bigger and tankers, trucks like trucks coming in and, and out, out. Yeah. as well as yeah. Justin Sternberg was pointing out earlier. Yeah. I yeah. mean. This is, you know, there's just a lot of activity in there. So in a lot of ways, uh, Chauncey, fortunate at this point. I mean, we don't know the condition of the person hospitalized and exactly what happened, but fortunate in a lot of respects that we're, we're looking at what we're looking at right now. Right, and I was about to say, a lot of times in the past when we've covered these uh, explosions at um, these plants, Jonathan, we, um, we, we normally uh, have more people injured. So, right. um, and, and this has been going on for how long now? Um, Man, you know, you know I think we, we came up at, uh, about 1210 and yeah. that had already been, you know, well into well into gotcha. burning at that point And there was no fire response at, at all gotcha. yeah. at that point. So, um, you know, a, a, a more over an hour a, a yeah. into this and only one person um, reported uh, having to be taken to the hospital, uh, which is which is that that's good because Absolutely. we've seen this incident play out where in the very beginning we've been told uh, several people uh, had to be treated or several people have been taken to the hospital, um, and not knowing what that where that person was or what uh, the, the injuries that person has uh, suffered, uh, but when that blast happens, <clears throat> the thing about it is that on a, a, a plant like this you talk about trucks going in trucks going out the staffers workers the plant workers you don't know where they are right, uh, in, in conjunction to where the blast took place and that's what don was talking about is that people were displaced you know in adjacent factories and plants obviously well down from yeah. where that explosion was because yeah. it's just protocol and uh, cautions that you have to take. Yeah. It'll also be interesting to talk to the neighbors out there to see what they experienced, what they heard. Um, you know, in, in the past we've covered these and uh, we've talked to neighbors and they, they talk about the shake. They talk about yeah, the, for sure. their, 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 um, their floors trembling and their, uh, their, their windows. Even at some point we've seen windows break out and, 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 and crack, but uh, we haven't um, seen any of that uh, just yet or heard from I, neighbors just yet. I am yet. looking at a tweet and we're going to wait to sort of confirm these things can't just put anybody's tweet up uh, but just discussing right what it was like to kind of experience that I also want to take a look again I think one big thing here uh, is a closure I'm not exactly sure exactly what view this is Chauncey but it's pretty indicative right here again total closure of the Sam Houston Tollway ship channel bridge and got to yeah. be detoured at 225 we know this is part of 225 and um, you know, I mean, you know this area a little bit better than I do, but that's a, 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 an example right now. Right, and, and I'm telling you, and I, I know police uh, in um, 
police that they are, I, I know right now they're trying to um, get, get a plan together as to what this is going to look like as it gets closer to four o'clock and uh, people start to leave work, people start to come back home. We have Shannon standing by. Uh, Shannon, can you tell us where you are and what you're seeing? Hey, we're on I-10 eastbound near Deldale Avenue, and I mean, you were talking about it. You said the traffic is bad. Take a look. So we were driving to the scene, and we finally just had to step out of the car. We gave up on trying to get there with the road closures being the way they are right now. Now, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this. I'm going to take a step back and let Fran point his camera that way. There are emergency lights further up. There's also a crash involving a tractor trailer. This is right by one of those road closures, so even further compounding the traffic that we're seeing here on I-10 eastbound. Got you. And, and, and Shannon, so I-10, I, so I the southbound uh, direct connectors, uh, they're completely closed. So where are, where are these cars going now? Where are they being rerouted? That is an excellent question. I'm still trying to figure out where we're going to be rerouted, um, but I, I know that there are some tweets out about that. You may have a better idea of uh, where they're being rerouted than I do right now. We just know that we've been sitting still in this traffic. Um, there is some movement, but but not much. Got you. Yeah, uh, the, the Harris County Toll Road Authority um, talked about the update. The total road closure there the, of Sam Houston tollway ship channel bridge we've, and we've got uh, northbound drivers right. traveling northbound there are going to be detoured Toward at 225, 225 and then drivers traveling southbound you'll be detoured to i-10 right uh, but the southbound direct connectors to i-10 will also be closed right but it's interesting to see this because she's in um i think she if i'm looking correct i think she's maybe um n not quite there yet but in, in, in near that so it's going to be interesting to see how they um, start to reroute this traffic as they start to close down the road and uh, really make this detour official and start to uh, redirect and uh, detour those drivers. I'm just pulling up a lot of different looks here. This is from our Transtar camera right now, I-10 East at the East Beltway 8 and you look on the right that gives you an idea. I mean this pretty standstill traffic right now Chauncey. And we, we expect, right, traffic in Houston kind of all the time, but not necessarily in this location around 1.15 in Thank the you. afternoon. And sadly, Jonathan, that's why I talked about the task police, um, you know, ha have on their hands um, as we get closer and closer to that 4 o'clock hour and 5 o'clock hour, um, it, it's going to get even even worse. Um, uh, so they'll, even with that, de especially with the detour and trying to, um, you know, tr trying to make it as easy as possible for drivers and keep things um, flowing, it's definitely going yeah. to be a headache here in this area uh, for a few hours to come because even now, one, one o'clock here midday, uh, you see the big traffic build up right there. And I want to reset again, like how did we get to this point that we're talking about just full and total closures of the Sam Houston Tollway Ship Channel Bridge as we uh, just get a look at this plan again pay attention here it's already fire and smoke and then poof, you see that explosion right there chauncey you have to imagine to have been in that area during that time how terrifying that yeah. must have been and we're told this happened around 1207 this is one of our houston transtar cameras capturing the moment you see right there that large explosion at this ineos plant uh scott i was also above the scene uh capturing the large flames and smoke billowing in the air but here we are an, an hour past that that um, and we've seen a, uh, a, a significant difference in, um, uh, in in the scene. There's not you, uh, I don't I don't even know if there's any fire. Well, this um, is a live that, look live right look. now at yeah, sort of so, the, at the difference here. Yeah. So um, so it looks like um, things have calmed down and they are calming down and it doesn't look like any uh, hot spots are even left. We know we had that one hot spot Don Armstrong was talking about that was under the tanker, but he said that it, it didn't seem like that firefighters even thought that that was a major concern uh, at the time. But suddenly uh, a stark contrast from just an hour ago, um, 1207, when that uh, big explosion happened here at the Enios plant there off of Pasadena Freeway. And looking, we're also, Chauncey, I mean, you talked about it, I, I know, and I can see it in our uh, notes that we have really pouring into the newsroom at this point, kind of checking with the EPA, as you said, if there had been past violations yeah. there. And we're working to get some answers right now. And 
uh, talk with the EPA directly on that. Yeah, uh, I was talking to one of our producers and we were uh, talking about a possible uh, uh, oh, gotcha. We were talking about a possible um, incident that happened at a different plant, but sort of the similar thing. But we are ch checking uh, with officials and trying to uh, figure out has anything happened um, like this at this <clears throat> excuse me, at this plant, um, and also different reports, um, you know, fr from this plant and their standing uh, yeah. with the EPA, um, and, and also talking about air quality. Um, I, I know when we, we have these, that's the number one thing, uh, one of the number one things that neighbors talk about, you know, the, the, the air quality. Am I safe to go outside? Sure. Am I safe to breathe? Uh, we normally, in, in the past, we brought in tox docs to, to kind of guide us through what people out there uh, living in that area should be doing because um, it's, it, it, it's so preliminary right now. We don't know in this particular explosion when it exploded what chemicals we're talking about, right, right. what chemicals may or may not have been released into the air. Yeah, and as you mentioned, I mean, a laundry list of them right now. And I know that uh, we're, I mean, efforting to talk to a lot of different people. And as you talked about, things can, you know, reignite at some point. I do think the big concerns right now for people are for one the entire area uh, around the ship channel bridge is is just a disaster right now uh, that's going to be a, a, a closure and you have to imagine uh, for a while right now as we're looking yeah. at uh, the plants the plant sort of smoldering right here we did get a new update let's check out this update here uh, from harris county sheriff ed gonzalez saying unified command has been established uh, hcfmo is the lead area roadways are open you know I, i'm not quite sure what to make of that frankly yeah, it kind of contradicts what the yeah um uh Maybe, maybe area roadways. Maybe he's talking about the, I, I, and I don't know if he would be talking about the roads around the plant because um, in the past those are the first roads to be closed. But at, we want to go back out to Shannon Ryan. Is she still here? Is she still there with us? Um, but um, we do know that that detour has been put in place, and what we've been told by the um, uh, toll road authority, um, them detouring from 225 and the I-10 connector going southbound. Yeah. Um, is Shannon Ryan there? She was stuck in some of that traffic. Uh, if we can go back to that shot, Jonathan, uh, where we see all of that traffic just kind of at a standstill there. Um, so, uh, and, you, and you see there, and you look at the tweet about area roadways are open, but you see uh, the fire um, uh, truck right there um, kind of directing um, drivers here off of, off of this freeway. And I, and I think one, one thing, right, you can sort of split the difference. It may be open at this point, but obviously very slow going yeah. uh, with a lot of backups as well. Yeah, or, or half open when we've seen this where it half, it's half, half open, but with the detour, uh, because they, they are getting these cars off of, off of the freeway. Um, uh, yeah, let's talk to Shannon and see. I know she was stuck in the traffic for a while. Um, so we want to go back out there to Shannon Ryan and see what she's seeing and uh, see if things have gotten better uh, where she was. I know they, they just had to stop because they were at a standstill. Shannon, can you hear us? Yes, things have gotten a bit better. So, hey, I, I am. Do you, can you guys hear me? Yes, yeah, we got yes, you loud and We got you. Okay, all right, fantastic. Yeah, so we've just gotten back on the road. I'm gonna switch the camera around so you can take a look at what we're dealing with here. Um, the traffic has gotten a, a bit better. We're, we're finally moving. We're on I-10 eastbound right now. Again, still near Del Dale Ave, so we have not moved much. Got you. And we've just learned, um, and it, it, this is probably dealing with the, um, the sheriff's tweet, uh, traffic uh, over the Ship Channel Bridge is back moving again. So that, that may explain why we are seeing, you see there, we have that shot, um, yeah, while we are seeing a, traffic a, a kind of- live look right yeah, now. We're also ch seeing that traffic kind of move um, uh, a little more steady than, than at a standstill. Uh, Harris County Sheriff Ed, Ed Gonzalez also talking about um, that, you know, the, air, the area roadways there are, are not closed. And that was, the, we knew, do know that they had reported that the ship channel was closed, but we're seeing now uh, the traffic moving right there along the ship channel, which will hope, hopefully ease up some of that traffic. And uh, this just in right here from the city of Pasadena, take a look here. It feels like, frankly, things are starting to wind down and calm down with this, which we're eager to see this from the city of Pasadena uh, saying at about 117 here the fire that happened at Ineos at 225 Beltway 8 
has been extinguished. No protective measures are needed for Pasadena residents. It looked like the roads are opening as well, right. Chauncey. So yeah. it looks like where we are from, from this moment right here, uh, where this thing just totally exploded and went up in flames, to where we are right now has come a long way. And Jonathan, I can tell you, you know, that's it, it happened in the span of an hour. Yeah. Um, you know, normally it takes a little longer. Uh, so we're, we're hoping that this uh, was I'm not uh, anything major. We only have one person still being reported uh, having to be taken to the hospital. We want to go back out to Micah Hatfield. She is there near the plant on scene. Micah, what can you tell us? So we have seen a big shift out here. First of all, the traffic has let up tremendously, uh, at least on the Laporte freeway. I've also just learned from Precinct 8 Constable uh, Sandlin that the Beltway has reopened. He said that they know there were two explosions at this Ineos plant and they were uh, they had the Beltway closed hey, mostly as a precaution like in case there was another soon. explosion. Like but the Beltway. Yeah, unless we have some. Micah, go ahead. I don't know if we cut you uh, off hopefully there. Hopefully you guys our, are still uh, on us, but yeah, our apologies. Yet, no, no issue. Um, so the Beltway has reopened. Uh, Precinct 8 was out here doing a lot of traffic control. Uh, we are right at the base of the Ineos plant, right where you would drive in um, to get down there. We have a photographer out here who has a drone up over the scene. I'm not sure if Don Armstrong is still up there, but I've been able to look um, inside of the plant Doug. through our drone. And it does, the fire is out. Uh, they were still putting water on it, so that's a good thing. There's not that big plume of smoke in the air that we saw earlier. Now, when you came to us earlier, I misspoke. Uh, we were over by the Oxy plant earlier, and uh, we saw a lot of the employees sitting outside. Uh, the fire was not at that plant. It seems that they were just kind of shutting down some nearby, um, nearby operations in case something else was to happen. So that was not where the fire was. It was here at the Ineos plant. Uh, we have seen some of the fire um, vehicles leaving the scene um, and, and some still going in, but not at this high rate of speed that we saw, the urgency that we saw uh, from officials back when this first happened. The fire was down this way. Um, you, you can't really see, um, see it from here. We were able to see the smoke over the building. Uh, but we're all, all the media is out here. We're waiting for someone from uh, either the emergency, some sort of emergency department or from the company to come out and give us some information about what it is that happened. But again, good news for drivers in the area is that the traffic has reopened. I can see cars passing on the Beltway uh, once again right now. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Micah, for that report. And uh, Jonathan, those are two good signs that things are calming down is yeah. one when you see um you know the fire and the smoke sort of dissipating and going away and uh we're seeing these clear skies again and number two we see the traffic starting to flow again and no roads once again being closed and um and then opening them back up um the the ship channel and uh and she also said even the beltway back open so those are two good signs that things are cal calming down and that um things may not have been as major um, you know, as they, they, they could have been when we talk about um, these plants yeah. and see that video of that huge explosion. Yeah, we were just looking at uh, live views right now. We've actually got all kinds of different ways to bring people news in real time, tell you what's going on in our area. That drone shot that Noah was providing, you're seeing, again, sort of an active uh, firefight, I guess, still going on just in terms of some water putting out that mm. Uh, final, you know, uh, fire in places, but also again, everything uh, cleared on the roadways or at least starting to clear. Micah made a good point. I guess what we look forward to now is an explanation and yeah. a briefing. Say what happened here. Yeah, w what happened? We want to know what happened. We want to know what how the one person taken to the hospital is doing, mm -hmm. what they were exposed to, their, the extent of their injuries, uh, what chemicals uh, were, were burning, what chemicals may or may not have been released into the air. And I'll tell you, Jonathan, we've covered so many of, of, of these. These happen, um, it, it's seemingly often, but um, one thing that we hear from neighbors out there, they always, um, they always question, uh, you know, do I want to move? Uh, yeah. You know, do, do uh, you know, th th it's, it's a concern of mine, uh, especially as we see these pl uh, more and more plant fires uh, um, happening. 
here over the years. Um, and uh, but it, but I'll tell you, this is one that it it it, it, it ended quickly, which is good news. Um, and, you know, the smoke and the fire. Um, seemingly gone and the, the skies are clear out there and once again we're seeing traffic kind of move it's it's um, moving steadily. right but you yeah. also see still like a pretty yeah. big back up there it looks yeah. like on, on especially I on this yeah especially for a second, so yeah. Yeah. and we're going we're going to again uh, here's a live look at the plant going to step in and uh, check in with our abc 13 new newsroom here uh, briefly and kind of uh, see what our next step is from here Shannon and then you to talk about the okay. with uh, the weather winds and the air quality. So checking back in here on ABC 13 Chauncey as we continue to look live at firefighters who've been able to get in there now one of the things that we saw with that massive fire and explosion right I mean firefighters with a fire that big yeah. they can't afford to try to get close to that now we're seeing really uh, that water in full effect and that was that uh, tanker that uh, Don Armstrong earlier was talking about that um, did have a little fire hot spot right under it. But um, certainly this is, uh, we want to go back. This is all happening at the Enios uh, chemical plant there um, at 3503 Pasadena Freeway uh, around 1207, we mm -hmm. understand. And there's um, some video from earlier of Sky, right that's what I'm talking about, about how yeah. big this thing was yeah. earlier. Firefighters can't come close to yeah. something like that. Yeah, and uh, the explosion happening uh, around 1207, and you see there um, just, that explosion uh, just suddenly happening sky eye over there uh, catching the the fire and you see the big plumes of black smoke uh, but cer certainly a difference uh, an hour has made if we want to go to the shot of uh, what the plant looks like now as we go out to Micah Hatfield and even Micah you talked about how things have calmed down there and you were uh, you were saying that officials uh, told you there uh, might have been two explosions here Well, that's what I heard. So I, I spoke to the Precinct 8 constable. They are the ones out here kind of doing traffic control uh, for all of this, closing the beltway and things. And he told me that they're, they've learned there was two explosions and they closed down the beltway because they were concerned that there was possibly, a, well, if there was an additional explosion that, you know, it could impact, uh, have some impact there. So they did it as a precaution. Uh, but the beltway is back open. The Laporte Freeway is moving uh, normally. When we got out here, there was such a sense of urgency amongst everyone. Um, emergency officials trying to get down this road to the Ineos plant. Uh, we're right at the base of it. And so uh, they were heading down there really quickly trying to extinguish that fire. When we got out here, we were uh, in Baytown and we drove over right. here so we could see that big plume of smoke 
uh, for quite some time, but now fortunately it is out. We're waiting on a media briefing that should hopefully happen soon. Back to you guys. Micah, just a couple follow-up questions. Are you not allowed to get any closer? Is that sort of as close as, as y'all were able to get? And then have you gotten any word of when that briefing might be so we can learn more? Um, so, yeah, this is as close as they'd let us get. We tried to go to other areas and get a better view of it because here uh, you, you really we certainly couldn't see the flames. We could only see uh, the black smoke kind of billowing over some of these buildings down at the end uh, when we got here. So they wouldn't let us any closer. It was very uh, active when we got out here. They really didn't know where to put media, so they kind of parked us here in the grass outside of the plant. I don't know when that briefing is going to happen, but I did uh, just get word that we are in the area for the media staging area. So that's good news. Uh, whenever that briefing does happen, that will be in the correct spot. And Micah, we're being told that that media staging area is uh, on the, the, the freeway, the feeder road there at Channel City Road, uh, which you may be, you know, quite close, uh, close there. Uh, but the initial uh, staging area for the media. Uh, we're being told right now, but thank you for your reports. Uh, we know things are getting better um, out there. We can also see uh, from the roads that things are also getting. And much I do better. want to point out. I mean, it can, we're going through a lot of different video here. This again is video from earlier, and that's Chauncey. What you're talking about, yeah. not just the plant here, but you see that area where where tankers basically come in to sort of fuel up and fuel out. This right next to railroad tracks as well. This video uh, from Sky Eye 13 from earlier today, and I think we're going to get Sky Eye back in the air here soon at some point to kind of take stock of this, but just to give you an idea what we were talking about. And Jonathan, this is also the scary part about it because you don't know if this will ignite more explosions or, or what chemicals are being released or what's in the tankers. And you talked about the the, even the, the trucks coming in and out. There's just so much uncertainty there. Uh, but it, it seems like they were able to put that fire out uh, and the fires around it, um, uh, the little fires around it out uh, you know, pretty fast because right here to the right is, uh, you see now, um, that is what this Enios plant is looking like right now after this uh, big explosion and one person having to be taken to the hospital. Uh, we're still trying to learn their condition, but uh, we want to bring in uh, meteorologist Alan now. Now, Alan, uh, you, you talked about uh, earlier uh, the winds and uh, the, the big role it plays in something like this, especially when it comes to air quality. Yeah, I don't think we'll have too many concerns about air quality for a couple of factors. Yeah. One is that the wind's been really mixing everything. Yep. Uh, ever since the explosion, the winds were gusting about 30 miles per hour or so. And yeah. and two, the uh, second point of that is we don't have like a lid on the atmosphere like a cap. Sometimes you get like an inversion where all the air is trapped near the ground, so yep. it can't really mix up. And then you get all the smoke hugging the ground, and we don't have that today. So, you know, all the smoke from earlier just blows out of here very quickly, which is good for right. yeah. air quality concerns. We can show you quickly. We want to show you a graphic or two. Again, the wind's still gusting roughly 25, 30 miles per hour from the south and southeast. And that's about what it was at explosion time. I think it was 32 in Pasadena at the time, mm -hmm. the gust. So, uh, you know, the, any any wind is quickly dispersing or dispersed any of that smoke from earlier. If we zoom in the wind direction, when we look right around Pasadena, there's the icon on the bottom of the screen where the fire was. And, you know, any smoke would have blown basically straight across the Buffalo Bayou up toward Interstate 10, but lifting up in the air and getting mixed out pretty quickly. So, again, that if there is any more smoke emanating this afternoon, it's going to take that same route. It's basically yeah. the same wind the rest of the day. So none of that's blowing into Houston. It's all kind of staying east of town. Alan, I was talking to it. I was texting with the tox doc who told me that that the wind is the is the, the winner here in this, that um, that she didn't think there was going to be a, a major problem with air quality, too, because the wind was able to get if anything or whatever was in that uh, and smoke it was able to blow it on out yeah i mean fast. it's moving so fast and yeah. mixing it so quickly that yeah it's dispersing really really well yeah. right. well um alan thanks so much for checking in again while we got you real quick everybody wants to know what are we looking at sort of for the rest of the day 30 second boil it down i know you have some additional <laughs> forecasts coming up we yeah, good here in houston yeah well, i mean we're good at just what you see right now the clouds kind of breaking up breezy warm uh, up in the low 80s and maybe a little warmer tomorrow it's mm -hmm. uh, it's looking like another breezy day staying hot yeah. i know it was hot <laughs> you know it's, it's a, we've been on this roller coaster roller coaster up and down i, I think uh, i was talking to david tillman uh, um, chief forecaster david tillman and he was telling me that we should be on that warm path yeah <laughs> right the, now the cold days are the, done the yeah. Slow, <laughs> yeah slow climb up right. the roller coaster yeah. alan shoemaker thanks yeah. so much thank you so much Again, an, another live look. This is uh, from our drone shot and looks pretty idyllic 
uh, right now yeah. at this point. I do want to check in with Shannon Ryan again in a little bit, but as we kind of see that drone actively moving over an area that, you know, it certainly didn't look like this an hour ago, Chauncey, when we came on air, but everything looks pretty calm right it, now. It did not, and Jonathan, I've got to tell you, in covering these, uh, you know, I want to say, uh, you know, this is the fastest that I've seen that smoke, um, uh, you know, from an, from an explosion like that and from what Micah Hatfield was saying that uh, people on the ground there telling her that possible two explosions, um, you know, and that much smoke um, and, and, and that dark of a plume of smoke and it clears out uh, this fast. And now it looks like, you know, if we if if. If we, we didn't know any better, nothing had happened here at this plant this morning. Uh, so you see the media staging area right there as they're waiting to hear um, the specifics about uh, today's explosion this morning or um, this afternoon, rather at 1207 here at the Enios plant. Uh, we also know a bit a major uh, factor traffic and traffic has been uh, moving. We know at one point the again, ship channel again, it is closed. moving, but it is still really yeah. impacted. I'm going to yeah. take that uh, live sign out at the top. This is I-10 East yeah. at Norman and uh, Chauncey, while the roads have reopened, as yeah. you and I both know, when yeah. you have a major event like this, it's yeah. still going to take a while wow. for all those folks to get going again on the freeway. Yeah, it is. But, you know, it, it was good to hear them op opening up the, the, the ship channel. And yeah. um, and it looks like this detour, um, you know, is, is, is going to be closing up soon. So um, this backup, hopefully, as time goes on, that um, that, that traffic will uh, be moving a little more smoothly and we won't have to worry about this kind of backup right in the middle of rush hour or as we move uh, closer to that four or five o'clock time slot. One, there's a, a few things that are left for us and I, and I know that um, I can see it that uh, Micah's gonna stay out there, right? And just sort of try to get the facts about what happened. Mm -hmm. I know Shannon Ryan is gonna head over and try to talk to members of the community, people, yeah. workers who were there uh, at the fire. And one question comes to mind is, has this happened at the plant before? Is the plant being transparent about it? Does it happen again? Not to pick on the plant, but you have to ask these questions, right? When you have something like this and so many workers there. Yeah, and you also, you you, you want to know their standings. You want to know their uh, their ratings. We want to talk to the EPA. Um, and we also want to get a clear picture as to what exactly uh, might have been burning out here um, and what right. was in the smoke, what was uh, dispersed in the air um, and what neighbors could have possibly uh, br uh, breathed in uh, out, out there. Of course, that's, uh, you know, their, their, their major concern uh, when we see these. But we've seen, um, you know, w we've seen much worse. We've seen and we've heard from uh, workers after explosions where they were trying to uh, climb fences and trying to get out of it's harm's so way. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've seen the, the chaos uh, right after an explosion and it's never been this calm this quick so um, but updating you one person has been taken to the hospital we're still trying to uh, get information as to how that person is doing and what exact injuries that person uh, may have suffered but this is once again all happening here at the Enios plant there off of a uh, Pasadena freeway and you do have a major concern certainly for that person hospitalized I'm yeah. gonna check in with Carolina Olivares so we're gonna be able to check in with Shannon Ryan one more time okay. and sort of see what her plan is we're gonna go to Shannon now who's kind of driving out there uh, on the roads right now and Shannon certainly things look like they have uh, cleared up on the freeways here and what's the next move for you out there in the Pasadena area? Well, things certainly have cleared up out here on the freeways. I'm going to show you what they look like right now. So we finally made it out to the staging area more than an hour after we got the call to head this way. We were out in Umble. We were initially on the Beltway and I heard Micah talking about it, but the plume of smoke, we could see it all the way from where we were. It was uh, certainly jarring. So now that we are finally here, we're going to head out into the neighborhoods and we're going to talk to some folks here about what they've seen and how they feel about this happening in their community. It's ABC 13, Shannon Ryan reporting. Shannon, we're looking forward to uh, what you're able to learn there uh, as we continue to get answers. And uh, this will, uh, you know, be a big focus for us. But as we know, Chauncey, uh, here in Harris County, the uh, news is fast and furious. There's a yeah. lot of stuff circling with the TEA yeah. and the state and certainly mm -hmm. uh, some major Another court cases tonight. that we're following. Yeah, yeah that's right. The yeah. TEA meeting is tonight, but we'll have much more on this throughout yeah. the day. And I, you know, when we, when we talk about the TEA meeting tonight, 
um, I, I am hoping that uh, Commissioner Morath uh, uh, shows up. I think a lot of people were, that was uh, a, a, a main factor of, of, of anger and yeah, frustration. Yeah, HISD parents with, were upset They were, they night. wanted to see uh, the man who was making uh, most of the decisions behind the scenes. And uh, they felt some kind of way that, you know, you come in, you say we're taking over, and you do these interviews the day before, and you give so out statements. We're going to be accountable. That, we're right. going to do this. And we're going to be show transparent. Up to the meeting. Yeah, yeah. And, sure. uh, and and in talking to even um, some of the educators and leaders out there, um, you know, th they were literally saying, you know, we came in with an open mind, but then to find out that he, that the commissioner is not there, yeah. that really kind of sprawled things off for some not of exactly those parents. Exactly the best best yeah, foot to put forward not. first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, we got uh, eyewitness news coming up at 3 o'clock. We do know that we will get a briefing at some point here. I imagine, Brittany and Carolina, we're going to take that live on the ABC 13 stream yeah. when we get the briefing. So stay on the lookout uh, for that. We hope to learn a lot more from fire officials in Pasadena city officials hopefully right just want to hear from the plant yeah, themselves we do. about what happened because yeah, we want to yeah. know what was burning we want to know uh, what happened we want to know how that worker uh, is doing and how it all played out this morning but good news right now only one person reported uh, having to be taken to the hospital and it seems like the scene is pretty much clearing up and in it happened at 1207 it, here we are at 145 we've seen these scenes go on much 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 longer so We'll certainly work to get that worker's condition and the rest of the answers for you and the facts. Uh, join us for Eyewitness News at 3, where you're streaming us right now, certainly on the television machine as well, but stay tuned for that briefing uh, when we do get it. For Chauncey Glover, I'm Jonathan Bruce here in the ABC 13 newsroom. Television machine. Haven't heard that one in a while. <laughs> we now return you to your regularly scheduled program already in progress.